Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Martin. Hey, mate. You might have seen on a recent episode on MCM TV 2 that we modified this little uh, GN250 here. Nugget of a an bike. An absolute nugget of a bike. But we pretty much changed everything from seat to suspension. We chopped stuff. We want to make the whole thing shorter. We cut the frame down. We welded stuff. New seat, new paint. Um, a lot of people wanted to see the orange tank stay, Martin. And I wanted to see the orange tank stay as well, except I was actually trying to make that bike look like something else. Like a moto compo. Well, not like a moto compo, but the like something else. The best bike ever made. I was actually inspired, oh, Martin, like by a bike that I didn't own at the time, but <laughs> now I do. Yes. Which is this, the Bonneville T100 Black. So today on Mighty Car Mods, Mighty Bike Mods, Temporary rename. Temporary it's profile change. Temporary just for one. Actually, you know what? We've done quite a few bikes, Martin. Heaps. I had a look. We've Heaps. done the Moto Compos, we've done Zoomers, we ride dirt bikes, all sorts of things. But um, there's not going to be any cars in this video. We're going to explain why it's all going to make sense. Unless we break um, something and have to go to the shops to get the bits. Which is, which very is not going to happen. Today. Unlikely. I was about to say very likely. Um, so here it is. We're doing something a little bit different today. We're modifying a bike. Why are we doing it? You're about to find out. Welcome to Mighty Car Mods No Car Edition. So you built this bike. That's right. To look like that bike. Well, I was inspired by this, which is what I wanted, but yep. I didn't have. Yep. So I got that absolute nugget. That was like two grand, two and a half grand, another two grand's worth of stuff spent on it. And it turned into that little bratty racery thing. And you got this second hand, but knew these things are not cheap, are they? Uh, I think these are maybe somewhere between 15 and 20 grand. This is a T100. They also yep. make a 1.2 litre version, which so this, is a T120. This is a one litre? This is a 900cc. Um, Martin, you'll be happy to know, mm -hmm. search by cheapest, buy now. Oh, good. This was the cheapest uh, Bonneville uh, on the internet. Uh, why, Martin? I don't know why. It seems to be rare. I had a search saved. Um, this one came up in the ACT, um, so I got this one second hand, it's done about 10,000 Ks, unregistered because it was registered in the ACT and so I said refund the rego and so I've got it unregistered, which is a good thing um, because we're actually building this bike up as a prop for an upcoming TV commercial for Super Cheap Auto. It is my bike, it is my personal bike, but um, before it begins its daily life as a whatever this is, a comfy little cruiser, um, it's going to be doing some skids on an ad. I've worked something out about you that you may or may not be aware of, and the people out there may or may not be aware of. Really, also, Martin? I've worked something out. Okay. It's taken a decade and a half. I'm scared. But I've worked something out. Yes. You like vehicles. I do, Martin. Yeah. I do. In if fact, it's got wheels. In Martin, in fact, we both do, and mm. we've been saying for a lot, of, uh, a lot of time, people have seen in the background of our videos, Dirt bikes, there's been some road bikes, push there's bikes. been push bikes, there's Motor been electric compos. skateboards, all sorts of things. Um, but um, Marty and I, you know, we've got, it's funny, we go through these cycles because when we first met, you had a VTR 250. Yes. Um, I had a V Star 650. Cool. Um, and then we've had motocombers and all sorts of stuff. Anyway, enough talk. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about this bike and then we are going to begin the modifications. This is a Triumph Bonneville T100, running a liquid-cooled 900cc parallel twin engine, making around 54 brake horsepower. The Bonneville name celebrates the Triumph land speed records of yesteryear, and the 100 was representative of the theoretical top mile speed from back in the day. This modern classic retro Bonnie is well and truly brought into the current day with modern features like traction control, ABS, ride-by-wire and even a USB port for charging your phone while you listen to some hipster tunes. I use this bike as a comfy cruiser for getting around town when I'm not on my dirt bike or thrashing around in any of the MCM cars. But then we got a phone call from a TV production company who said they needed a retro classic bike for an upcoming campaign. So I volunteered my Bonnie for a quick blacked out makeover. So let's check out the mods. The crazy thing about motorbike modifications is there are so many parts and so much support available. For example, with this particular bike, there's over 150 parts that Triumph make for them that you can modify from the factory 
if that's your thing. So I've got a bunch of Triumph parts that I've got online. I've got some secondhand bits here. We've got aftermarket parts. There's some stuff off eBay. And I've got a whole lot of customized parts for the T100 that have come from Motone Customs in the UK. They make absolutely everything that you can imagine for this bike. They sent me a whole bunch of stuff. I don't even know what's in there, but we're gonna go through. I said if it's black, then send it. So our job now is basically to put the bike up on the stand. We just got this stand here from Super Cheap Auto. It's bolted down into the floor. That's gonna keep the bike upright because we are gonna have to pull off some exhaust bits and other things. So we're gonna put it on there and basically Marty's gonna start from one end. I'm gonna go on the other end. <laughs> And, um, sorry, it's just, I'm getting immature. And, uh, and we're gonna get this bike modified. It's gonna be epic. So, um, let's kick the tunes and modify a Bonneville. <laughs> Martin, there are two ways of skidding the cat. Skidding the cat? Yes, sk skidding. Skidding the cat. No, skidding the cat. Martin, there's two ways. Either we just go into those boxes, we pull a thing out, and then we change it, or we pull every single thing out, see what we have, lay it all out on the floor, and then just start modifying stuff. That, that version is way more fun, but you know what also happens when you do that? You lose stuff. Yes. Because you put on the floor, this is awesome. Put, and then you yeah. kick it, and then your bolt that's irreplaceable is like out being eaten by a banshee. Yes. Or a hyena or whatever you got roaming around locally. Yeah. Um, and then it's all over. So we could also be smart and tackle the hardest job first so it gets funner as the day goes. That's true. Is that a good idea? Well, the biggest things that we're going to have to do is the exhaust needs to come off, which also involves kind of undoing basically the, the seat off, tank off, radiator undone, right. exhaust off, frame out so that we can get access to the exhaust parts down here. <laughs> Sounds heaps easy. Um, and uh, and then, and, and the biggest thing that's coming off the bike is that tail, like that big, that big thing can go, see you later. And I don't exactly know what's in these boxes. I know all the stuff that I bought, but I don't know all the stuff that they sent. So why don't we just, I think you're right, let's do the big stuff first. Yeah. Let's remove all of that and remove all of that. Is there instructions then... for any of this? Um... <laughs> there is, is there? So when I was working on my little GN250 over there, that was something that I just did a couple of hours each week so I could learn different skills working on the bike. That ended up taking about three months. With this build today, we've got a total of three hours before this bike has to be loaded into a van and sent interstate. I'll actually be riding this bike in an upcoming TV commercial for Super Cheap Auto. There'll be a Hollywood double, of course, who's doing the cool stuff. Marty will also be there, but with only three hours to build it, we gotta get to it. So let's grab the tools and get on it. The first step is jack up your car or your bike. Then we're going to remove the seat and disconnect the battery. The first things off are going to be the exhaust system and the rear whale tail which is holding on the lights because we're going to be replacing that with a Motone tail tidy. The tail tidy is probably one of the most common motorbike modifications and instantly makes most bikes look way better by cleaning up the rear end and who doesn't love a clean rear end? needs to be loosened and moved back to give us access to the frame bolts which we'll need to remove to get to the catalytic converter. We actually spend a lot of time working on our bikes together but it's usually posty bikes, dirt bikes or absolute nuggets that we found in Japan but this is one of the first times that we've worked on a bike like this and something that's so modern. Something that's a bit interesting and different about a bike so modern is that this exhaust looks like the sort of classic bikes where it comes straight out of the head and shoots back out through the bike, but it actually doesn't. It goes down and under the bike and into the X pipe or cat converter in this case. And so what's actually happening is it's coming out of the top, through here, through an X pipe, and then back out, and then through and continuing on, even though this shield makes it look like it's one piece. It's kind of cool actually, and like an interesting way of packaging while still retaining the classic look. 
The tail tidy is on and it's looking hot sauce. Next up, the rear lights and indicators can go on. Depending on your bike model, you may be able to get plug-in adapters. Otherwise, you've just got to wire into the factory loom. So here's a quick tip if you're doing this at home. Uh, run your lights and run your harnesses and stuff before you actually bolt this in, unlike what I just did, because once that's bolted on, you can't actually run anything through. So leave it loose, which is what we always say on Mighty Commons, leave it loose until everything is in place and then tighten it up. So I'm going to listen to my own advice, run the wiring, and then we'll attach this and then move on to the next part of the Bonneville build, Martin, get excited. I'm installing the brake light and running the wiring while Marty continues to battle on the front end. I planned on running a wiring adapter for the rear indicators and the tail light, but because I'm installing aftermarket indicator units, we'll probably end up just making our own connectors that are the perfect length and nice and neat and tidy. It's been a big job up on the front end, but Marty has finally got access to the catalytic converter and it is a way bigger job than doing the same thing on a car. Wow, that's heavy, man. That's like two and a half kilos, easy. I'll show you what's replacing it actually, Marty. It is over. Here, open up this guy. We have to use some of the hardware off this, I believe, like the clamps and Whatever else. Oh, cool. There it is. X pipe. Oh, look at it. There it is. Which way is it going? That way. Cool. With all the factory tabs, like the factory mounting tabs. Yeah. So you can put your heat shields and everything back on. That's pretty cool. What's interesting about these, Marty, I was at a Triumph dealer last week. They sell these at the dealership, like you can actually get them. Really? But depending on the region that you're in, it's probably one of the most common modifications that people do to these bikes. Yep. You can get slip-ons for back here that make the bike louder, but apparently this here is quite restrictive. So, of course, depending on your region for registration and stuff, like in Australia you need to be running a cat converter on your car and your bike. Yep. Um, this one's unregistered. It's a prop, so, you know... That's the way that is, but when it goes, you know, any cars and bikes going through Reggio and stuff need their cats. So that can take place and do its thing. Um, but people put these on Marty. Apparently these are dyno proven, extra power. Everything's dyno proven, isn't it? Yeah. Extra power. Um, well, it makes sense. It would definitely free it up. I mean, the manufacturers would know when they're making this stuff that you're going to you're going to sacrifice some power because you're trying to send all this exhaust through this massive thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but what, what's interesting is like a lot of car parts, coilovers, blow off valves, all that kind of stuff, you know, is that, you know, you get them from the shops, but technically whether they're legal or not in your region, um, people should do their own research, right? Yeah. To go do their own thing, Martin. Absolutely. Some places they don't care. Some places like California, they very much care and they're testing for it every single year. Just depends That's where you are. That's the smog test thing they do over there, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Which is why cars have those OBD2 ports that you can plug those little flash things into. Yeah. Thank you, California. That made things a lot easier. Yeah. Um, but for our purposes today, for our film bike, this here is going to unlock some power uh, and it's going to unlock the sound of this parallel twin 900cc Triumph engine. We just need to transfer over some of the mounting hardware, which is also clever because you might as well recycle it. It's also yep. nice working on something new, isn't it? It is. It's just not yes. all filthy and grubby like that last thing we just did. Yep. That was so filthy and grubby, man. So back here, I've just plugged in the wiring harness adapter. Now over here, we've got uh, R is for the right indicator. We've got left, uh, T is for the tail light. A is for a spare accessory port. So these bikes come with a USB port. That is so you can add another one. But the indicators that were on there before, obviously, were these massive heavy things here. And we're gonna replace them with this cool little product called an Emblaze pin. So these here, uh, a tiny little pin that is super, super bright that is installed in place of these. And the really interesting thing about this is it reflects off 
in every direction, super bright, and actually reflects out past this black section as well. So that there, uh, there's a number of different ways that you can mount them. You can mount them here. You can mount them on the shock. We're doing them on the front as well. I don't know where they're going yet, but all the wiring is here. Um, we're going to need to do a little bit of soldering, and then the back is done, and we can get on to the blackness of everything else. There's lots of options when it comes to where to install your indicators. I've got these little black brackets that are going to connect to the top of the shock and that's going to provide a mounting point for installing my indicator pins. If you install these kind of indicators on your bike, make sure you orient them correctly. There's a tiny reflector inside the pin and these need to be reflecting backwards when you're installing on the back of the bike or forwards when you're installing on the front of the bike for maximum brightness. Meanwhile, Marty's installing our Performance x pipe which is going to unlock the sound of the engine and hopefully also unlock some horsepower. There's a huge aftermarket for slip-on exhaust tips for modern classic bikes, and there's a lot of argument about it, but the general consensus is they don't offer any real performance benefit on their own, and they're really expensive. A couple of slip-on pipes could cost up near 1500 bucks, while an X-pipe is around $250. I actually really like the look of the classic Triumph P-shooters that are on the bike, so they're gonna stay. But just keep in mind, depending on what country you're in, decutting your bike may be illegal. All right, so the first black thing is going on the motorbike, which is this black intake cover kit. That is basically replacing the factory one, like that, super black. This here is from, this is from Triumph of Seattle. Thank you. I mean, not thank you, I bought it, but thanks for sending it all the way to Australia. Thanks for existing. Thank you for making black things. Could have painted them, and that was the plan. But then it was just there, and I bought it, and there it was. Now we're going to have a good time. We'll be painting some other things, though, shortly, Martin. Just two guys that are having a good time. I was actually thinking of you last night, Martin. Oh, that's weird. Do you know why? What were you doing at the time? Or do I, I was not having some sauce as stored in my cupboard. Oh, no. You didn't. And I was thinking, if you were having sauce, you would have had your sauce out of the fridge like a fool. Dude, don't even... Why would you do this? We're having such a nice time doing this motorbike, and here you are starting massive debates about things that need not be debated. But I bet your sauce is in the fridge, isn't it? Of course it is. You That's store it in the fridge. Where it should be. No, it's a waste of the planet, mate. It's really not, because once it's cold, it stays cold. It doesn't take extra energy to keep it cold. No, that's not how a, a fridge doesn't work by cooling yes, things down, man. A fridge works by removing heat. Yep, okay. When you put sauce in a fridge, yep. that sauce is actually hotter then the environment that it's in, so it uses energy for that heat to be removed, at which point you don't even need the sauce in there. Look at me when I'm talking to you. Dude. And the point is, I, I can see you through here. This is not as cool, Martin. Look through here, see this hole up here? Look through the gap. Whoa, you know what was I'm... there before? Well, I hope, I hope there was nothing there because I haven't worked on this bit yet. I don't remember seeing but that But you hole. know on the GN250, apparently Cafe Racer Brat style, you're meant to have some tr a clear triangle. Yeah. Like a map of Tasmania. You know what's weird is that I can reach out and touch your nose. Oh, good. Through the motorbike. Oh, that's disrespected triumph. Disrespected triumph. Um, but Martin, um, on these bikes, it would appear that it's maybe not as cool, maybe because it's not as possible because this engine's so big. I like this bike. Martin, this engine's a parallel twin. Is it? You know what that means? Uh, that they're next door. Yes, they're next door to each other. Next but door it's neighbors. got a firing angle of 270 degrees. So if they were 360, they'd be double fisting like this. Yep. If they were 180, they'd be go, 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 go. But this is going. Hada, 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 hada. Hada. Put your sauce in the cupboard, man. No Captain way. Planet, thank I'm you. I'm never ever putting my sauce in the cupboard, dude. It's not happening. You know what? the sauce in the cupboard's a metaphor, right? What? For what? Our factory intake covers are gone and now the exhaust headers are being reinstalled back on the bike. Meanwhile, I'm removing the factory mirrors, which look like grasshopper antennae, or antennas, however you meant to say it. Random fact, did you know that grasshoppers' ears are actually on their stomachs? And they're actually a very good source of protein. I ate one recently. Someone sent me a packet of dried grasshoppers. Very tasty, but also very weird. 
Now to tidy up where the existing mirrors were, I've got these little tidy up kits which are plugs that go in the factory position so you've got no holes there. Nice and neat and sweet. Now the pea shooter exhaust tip can go back on. That's a clean install man, that's almost, amazing. Almost done, it's pretty tricky actually. Um, I would give it two out of three spanners. Really? Yeah, just because just of where everything sort of sits and clamps and the order you've got to do everything and taking half the frame off, like it's, yeah. it's a little bit tricky, but... Have you put the frame back on yet? Uh, I've loosely fitted it following your advice from before. Yep. And then we'll talk it all up properly because I understand that's fairly important yep. on this bike. Just the three bolts, the one near the fuel tank and two down there. Yep. Torque them up to spec and then you're back in the game, man. We move on with a hundred other things that we got to do. Excellent. I'm installing some Triumph bar and mirrors onto the ends of, you guessed it, the handlebars. These are a really easy install and look way better than the factory grasshopper units. The decat of this bike has been a huge job, but now to finish off, all Marty has to do is torque up the frame. The exhaust is done. That's moderately difficult just because the amount of different things that need to come off. Um, this whole side of the exhaust has to come off, half the other side. The good thing is though, you don't have to actually completely remove things like the frame. You've just got to loosen it to just move it out of the way so the old cat can come out and the new pipe can go in. Um, now that's all back together, so my next job is this awesome black bash plate and I love mods like this because not only does it look cool, it actually serves a function too, which is um, stopping the bottom of the bike and our shiny new pipes getting any damage from road or debris. While Marty installs our black bash plate, I've got a bunch of other black stuff to go on the bike. I've got some black bar end covers to go on the handlebars and then it's time to say goodbye or farewell or whatever they say in England to this massive front fender. It seems to be the done thing with the style of this bike to shorten the front fender. With my GN250 I had to mark it and then cut it by hand trying to get it as neat as I can. But luckily there is a way bigger aftermarket scene for this kind of bike so there's lots of options available for shorter front fenders. Now that the exhaust is on I can put the tank back. I had to move it to get to the O2 sensor wiring. That's right, O2 sensor wiring on a motorbike because we're in 2019. Um, and now this can get bolted back down. Bash plate's in. The bash plate looks great. Except that you can't change your oil when Unless it's there. Unless you take it off. Yeah. That was a Triumph part as well that came with Triumph bits. This is my Motom Duckbill Shorty, Martin. A Duckbill Shorty? Yes. Which that sounds Martin, like something uh, that happens, yeah, not yes. in a workshop. Let's just be honest, Martin. That sounds like a sex move, doesn't it? It really does. The Duckbill Shorty. The what would happen, Martin? The what, old... what, what, I mean, let's... Maybe we'll leave that to the comment section to tell us what goes down with a duckbill shorty. If anyone knows what a duckbill shorty is, please let us know. Um, or but don't. Last time, those keen viewers may have been watching my GN build, I actually had to kind of trace a shape uh, on my front fender and then chop it out and grind it. But again, Martin, because these bikes and modifying bikes is so popular now, you can buy a whole array of like modified fender bits for your bike, which is pretty cool. This bike is the 80s easy, easy listening version of what? bikes. Is it? Michael Bolton. It oh, really is, isn't wow, it? Like okay. it really I, was, is. I was wondering where that was going. Like everything bolts on, it just fits. It's nice to work on, it's new, it's got good hair. Like yes. it's just really good, isn't it? Good hair, Martin. Michael Bolton has good hair. Really? I think so, I don't know. There is no cable coming out of this throttle. No. Drive-by wire, Martin. Welcome to the future. It's got e-throttle on a bike. Yes, that's Is right. Is it good? Martin, it keeps it smooth. Yeah, it's also it? got traction control and ABS. Now it's sounding like a Triumph ad, which is not. No. But anyway, I like I'm like. i sure there's bad things there. about it too, but we'll find out once it's doing some stunts. I'm into it. I mean, I'm not into all that stuff always on cars. I like e-throttle on some cars. Yeah. But this is a really good idea. Martin, you know what? Let's talk about motorbikes for a second. Oh. I was either, either going to buy this 
or I was going to get like a BMW GS like adventure bike because yep. it is the forester of the motorbikes. Like it just does a little bit of everything. And I was like, that'd be awesome. Get rid of the dirt bike, get rid of a couple of road bikes, a couple of other nuggets, yep. get one bike that does it all. Yep. But then I realized I saw some videos of people riding them off-road and the kind of off-road that like I do on my WR and you do on your Hasselberg, you don't want to be doing on like a big BMW. I actually think those BMW GS bikes are freaking awesome. And let's be honest, I'll probably own one one day. But back to the task at hand. At the back of the bike, Marty is tidying up all the wiring and making sure it's waterproof. And at the front of the bike, I'm loosening off the headlights so I can get access to the factory wiring so we can replace the front indicators. finished the electrics there's still a couple of other things to do but we thought we'd just quickly flick it on and uh, see if it works so all right sounds Left promising indicator that's working oh working yeah on the back cool right working on the back brake light that's oh, working that's awesome man you might notice that these are flashing a little bit fast hold the information button down, turn it around like this. Up here, it'll come up with a menu where it says type, we change to type two. Then we hold the information button in again, that'll set type two. Now we turn it off, now we turn it on. Now, normal rate <laughs> indicators. That's so cool, man. No messing around with resistors and other stuff that you normally have to. A shout out to YouTube for that tip. Thanks, YouTube. Thank you very much, YouTube, and the sharers of that information. So seat back on, yeah? What else do we have to do? Uh, I'll get the seat on, we'll change the levers, and then that's it. I like how so. old grandpa's just like back there watching you. Yeah, I know. He's old there going, He's young you whippersnapper. I don't have adjustable blinkers, but if I did, you'd still love me. Oh, that's true. Oh, no, that's a mad bike, man. That's I love that bike. That's awesome. Maybe I should ride it. Um, this here, Dude, this this one here is actually good to go back on. This is um, this is ready to rock and roll. Just got to go. Oh, that tail tide is awesome. It looks great. Awesome. All right, levers, tank badges. Done. I'm replacing the factory levers with some ones that I bought on eBay. They're genuine black Triumph levers. Now you never really know what you're going to get on eBay or if what you've bought is what it says on the listing. But these ones look like very good quality and came in a fancy box that has a magnet holding it closed so I'm pretty sure they're legit. They're black and they're adjustable which is just what this bike needs. done it's time to remove the badges so we can paint them black. These look like they're made of metal but they're actually made of plastic. We're using a Ryobi power file to remove the tabs on the back of the letters. This means we'll get a better finish then we can reinstall the letters once the badges are dry. We're giving them three coats of satin black and while they're drying I've got some more black parts to install on the bike.
So the Triumph Bonneville actually got its name from the Bonneville Salt Flats where Triumph has been setting all sorts of crazy speed records. I think they held the land speed record sometime in 1950 through to 1970 and all the way since the beginning they've been working with Castrol which is a cool thing because Castrol has been working with Triumph and Castrol is also a sponsor of our show. Uh, so much so there's actually Castrol stickers on the modern bikes that you get today. So we're going to do an oil change, it's the last thing that we've got to do, put a filter oil in. 10W40, this is fully synthetic Power One Racing. Marty is gonna make sure that um, the badges and stuff are all good to go. Filter and oil gets done. Marty checks the badges, put everything back together, start it up, then in the van and the bike is out the door. We are close people, we are very, very close. I'm dropping the old oil and replacing the oil filter. And once that's done, we're filling it up with Castrol. The badges are now dry so we can reinstall the letters and glue them into place. The last job of the day is to reinstall the badges onto the tank of the bike and with that we are out of time and the bike is done. I'm really stoked with how far we got with this bike in just a few hours. And it's at this point in the film that we probably should have shots of it riding into the sunset with some poetic voiceover about being at one with nature, the search for adventure, the never-ending struggle for freedom in an unfair world, experiencing the soul of the highway, getting lost and realising that this is exactly the place that you were meant to find, the feeling of grasshoppers in your beard while you camp out under the stars as mosquitoes munch on your ball sack and you pretend to enjoy yourself as you share control contrived filtered photos of yourself on Instagram so that other people believe you're having the time of your life even though you'd rather be at home drinking Red Bull and playing Xbox. So there it is everybody that is our blacked out Bonneville T100 black. I was going to say it's a one day build but it wasn't even a half day build month. That was about three hours. We did a good job and there it is. So I think it looks rad. Subtle and classy mods, which is kind of the thing with motorbikes, isn't it? Because it's like small and intricate. Yeah. It's not like you go and paint the whole thing candy red and then go, oh, look, it's modified. Like it's it's yeah. small changes, but really, really fun to do. I mean, some people go absolutely crazy on the bikes, like angle grinding and welding stuff. And there's some amazing stuff out there that you definitely should investigate. But this was kind of like the way that I like my cars as well, like a very like neat and tidy. Mm. We've brought the back in, we've brought the front in, we've brought all of this down. It's more compact. What's it sound like? Martin, I imagine... I want to hear that sweet idle. How cool is this on this bike? The actual kill switch is also the start button. Um, there's the carburetor that you can hear there, Martin. Oh, the, the high, pressure, <laughs> high pressure fuel pump. And... Did I break it? No, no, it just takes a second because he's got new stuff on him. Sounds good. There we go. It's got a nice grumble to it now. I like it. Awesome. Well, there it is, everybody. Thank you for watching the show. This has got to get loaded into a van and off it goes. See you next time on Mighty Car Mods. Is it Mighty Car Mods next I time? Think, I think so. Why don't we? We should go and get like stuff, food and drinks that motorbike people like. What do motorbike people eat? I reckon like coffees and and don't they have craft croissants beers. with like hand beaten kale or something there's plenty of hand beating if it's got wheels we'll mud it <laughs> if we had a crappy like tv show from back in the day you know when there was like tv shows on like crap channels and they were crap shows yes if we if it's got wheels we'll modify it wow today on Marty and Moog's Wheels Adventures. Oh, stop. We're gonna go and get ourselves a jet and modify. Actually, that sounds good. That actually sounds really good. Yeah, we should do that.